Mariko, it's uh, great to see you again. Hi, Yan Ying. Hello. Thank you. Hi. Man, what a weekend. Yeah, Formula One is back and uh, let's say in a very positive way for the Ferrari fans, but in general, the race has been very enjoyable, at least based on my opinion and uh, the reviews of the race that we had from fans. So uh, it is very common for Austin to produce very exciting races, also in terms of strategy and also in terms of uh, analyzing performance. And this, is, this has not been an exception in my opinion. Yeah, it was great to see that fantastic battle. I mean, really throughout the race between Lando and Max. So exciting. Um, and then of course, like, man, Ferrari uh, one, two on the podium was great. Um, yeah, and most teams actually deploy um, one-stop strategy, even though it's, like, it's predicted to, um, you will have a two-stop strategy. Um, even though most, some of the teams that actually use two stops. Um, so yeah, Mirko, can you like um, expand on that? Yeah, I will, uh, let's say, show you that through the analysis I made uh, previously, uh, which also shows that in a way. But uh, as you said, uh, even though uh, the, that specific truck is very demanding on the tires of the, of the cars, uh, the winning strategy was a one-stopper and this is clear not just from looking at the race and the general outcome but also looking at the data as I'm uh, showing now. So for example this in my opinion is an analysis which uh, contains many interesting aspects because it's it tries to describe the race pace of each driver. You can see the drivers on the uh, let's say horizontal axis and then the lap time made on the vertical axis instead. Uh, you can see each point represents a, a lap time made in the 56 laps of the race and the colors denotes the steam. Because as Jan said, uh, different drivers did different number of stints. For example, most of them did two stops, uh, two, let's say, uh, stints, so one stop. For example, the first one, the first stint is denoted in blue and then the second one in gray. And then some of them, like for example, Magnussen or uh, Albon did two stops. So they uh, used three different uh, tire sets in the race. So uh, using different colors and also different markers to show you uh, the different compounds being used, we can not just understand how quickly was each driver throughout the race, but also throughout the stint and how long was the stint. So how many points are there? and which compound was used uh, along the steam. So this is, let's say, the final result. I will now uh, show you how uh, you can recreate this plot on jump, why I made uh, some data filtering, which I will discuss, and also how easily it is to filter data and derive conclusions from that. So it's cool to see it this way, because, um, you know, the few outliers really jump out at you, like the that um, that lap by Ocon. Yeah, because um, th that was, uh, let's say, uh, unexpected, but it is not unexplained in the sense that he did, uh, let's say, some laps at the end with the soft compound on very low fuel. So very low fuel, uh, fresh tires and also soft tires mean pace, let's say, very close to the one in qualifying. So even a driver who is using a car which comes from the midfield is able in the race to uh, perform very well for a handful of laps if the running conditions get close enough to the ones in qualifying. So I'm going to show you, as I said, how to recreate this in jump. So you should see my screen. First, as I said, I'm interested in, uh, uh, let's say, uh, analyzing the lap times. So I'm going to plot the lap time in seconds on the vertical axis. So each point is one lap of the race, independent of the driver who did the lap, okay? So many points, let's say, but you can notice that most of them were in a close, let's say, um, segment of the seconds, while we do have some outliers. But these outliers have an explanation, okay? And we can use that explanation to remove them. For example, we can exclude the inlets, okay? The laps in which the driver is going into the box. So we can select the variable pit in time and then select 
the laps for which this metric is missing, which means that the driver did not go into the uh, box on that specific lap. Then we are going to add another condition, which is instead the one on the pit out time. So um, choosing only laps in which the driver did not go out of the box on that specific lap. So again, I'm going to select the missing uh, laps again. You might have noticed that by doing that, some of these points, let's say, disappeared, okay? A and those points were slow laps, okay? So effectively doing that allowed us to remove some laps which were not representative and which would have polluted the data. Then we could also consider the truck status, okay? The fact that there was a green flag or a yellow flag or a safety car uh, and so on. So I'm going to use the truck status variable, which has a numerical value, which has a specific meaning. For example, one means green flag. So I'm going to just select the laps for which truck status is equal to one, which means that the, let's say the, the lap was run under a green flag. As you notice, the very low laps that I showed you before disappear, okay? So now we only have laps in a representative running conditions. Some of them might have been influenced by mistakes or by the traffic, but in general, we have removed 99% of the laps, which should have not been included into the analysis. So these are all the lap times. We can now add the uh, information about the specific driver who did that lap. So I'm going to drag the driver variable onto the horizontal axis. And as you can see now, the points are now, uh, let's say, subdivided into the different drivers who uh, completed that lap, okay? So you can notice some, let's say, trends, like for example, that Bottas was much slower than, for example, Norris, okay? Some things catch your eye. But to make the trend even clearer, we can, uh, let's say, order the drivers based on ascending, val ascending values of uh, uh, their uh, lap times, okay? This uses the mean. So the drivers are now sorted from the fastest one. So Leclerc, who had the lowest uh, lap time in seconds throughout the race on average, to the slowest one, which was Hamilton, who only completed a few laps. But then the real one was Bottas, okay? So you can really notice the trend, and now you can more easily compare the different drivers. So this already gives you some uh, precious information, okay? Who was quicker on average throughout the race? And also how repeatable was their lap time? For example, Leclerc and Verstappen were very consistent in their lap times, okay? There is not much variance between the best and the worst lap done by that uh, uh, driver. For example, this is not the case for, for Russell. His fast lap, was as quick or faster than the ones of Leclerc, Sainz, or Norris, but he had some very slow laps as well, also because he was starting from the back, so he was in traffic for the first part of the race. So to add additional information to this plot, we can, for example, add the information of the steam, okay? So I'm going to use the color to denote the steam uh, to which the uh, lap belongs to. So for example, the blue means that that one lap was made during the first stint. Gray means that it was done during the second stint. And for a handful of drivers, there was also a, th a third stint, which is now in red. For example, in the case of Magnussen, uh, Joe, Albon, and Ocon. Then we can add some additional information. For example, the compound, which was used for that specific lap. So I'm going to drag that, uh, let's say, variable uh, onto the, the graph as well as an additional overlay, okay? So I'm dragging also the legend. You can see that not only does the color uh, tell you which stint was that, but also the shape of the, let's say, marker tells you which compound was used in that specific, let's say, uh, stint. So we can notice also we can also see the strategy used by the different drivers. For example, the fact that Leclerc, like Sainz, Norris, Verstappen, and so on, all started on mediums and then transitioned to uh, hards uh, later in the race. This was not the case, for example, for Russell, 
because he started with hard and then trans transitions to the mini. So um, this is the final plot, but then there are some additional information about the stints. Okay, so not just who was quicker on average, which is told by the horizontal axis, but also who was quicker in each stint. We can do this, for example, by using a summary statistic. So I'm using the mean as our summary statistic, which will now, let's say, summarize each stint as a single point that has, let's say, a value, which is the mean on that stint, okay? So to make it more insightful, I will also add a label. So I will add a label by value. So a, a number close to each point, which tells you the lap time on average in that specific stint. This is just, let's say, three numbers with no decimal. So I will add the decimal by using label format best. So jump uh, is able to automatically identify the best, uh, let's say, format for the data. And now you have many numbers after the comma, which allows you to compare the different stint by the different uh, drivers. Is there anything that really jumps out to you when you look at this, like especially comparing, I mean, I suppose you could use this to compare teammates like in the same equipment. Yeah, exactly. For, for example, for teammates, we can notice that uh, Leclerc really did have a very big advantage over science in the first uh, stint, even though uh, this is in part impacted by the fact that science stopped five laps earlier. Okay, so the average fuel and tire wear was slightly different, while instead the difference in the second stint wasn't really there. And also you can notice that some uh, drivers really had the big difference between the two stints. Like I said previously, in the case of Russell, his first stint was pretty slow. He was in traffic for uh, many laps, but then his uh, second stint was actually the quickest one in the race, okay? No other rider, uh, let's say, could match his pace in the second stint. And notably, uh, Colapinto. So we, we've we been, uh, let's say, listening a lot about uh, people uh, praising uh, correctly, in my opinion, the rookies in this race. And this really shows you that in the second stint, especially Lozon and even more so Colapinto were extremely quick because in this second uh, stint, Colapinto was actually quicker than Leclerc. This is, of course, impacted by the fact that Colapinto was on 13 laps fresher tires. He was on mediums instead of uh, hards compared to Leclerc. But then the data still is meaningful and tells you that even taking those factors into account, his race was extremely solid, especially in the second part of the race in which on average uh, drivers are able to show their performance better because they are more free of traffic and so on. So also other interesting things are the fact that uh, even for teammates, different, let's say, uh, drivers use different uh, uh, number of stints. And for example, if we revert back to our previous uh, visualization, we can see, I will remove the label. We can see that, for example, Magnussen used one additional set compared to Hulkenberg. Even though on average, Magnussen was not weaker than Ulkenberg because uh, drivers are sorted from fastest to slowest left to right. So he lost additional time in the pits, 20 seconds more or less, but he wasn't quicker uh, than Hulkenberg. And this explains why, even though Hulkenberg started uh, farther back in the race compared to uh, Magnussen, he finished well in front of him. So this is also able to show you, let's say, uh, how different stint impacted pace. So you must take into account and only compare uh, directly. I mean, drivers who did the same number of stops, but as Jan correctly said, uh, the, let's say, winning strategy was the one adopted by most drivers was a one stopper. And in fact, there was no driver that using two stops, so three different sets was quick because the quickest one was Magnussen. And his pace was not impressive even compared to the drivers who used one fewer uh, set. So it, it seems that uh, most teams got it right in the fact that 
the one stop was the correct strategy in my opinion. This is pretty clear from the data and from this analysis as well. Great. This is uh, super interesting, Mirko. I really like seeing it like this visually and you can really see what um, what pops out. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if maybe um, you could talk a little bit about, you know, I know that this this Circuit of the Americas uh, course just really um, privileges downforce. Um, and I'm wondering if we can just talk a little bit about, you know, how the aerodynamics are reflected in the data. Okay, yes. In fact, the, the track is very, let's say, um, representative for aerodynamics because downforce and drag are very important in, uh, in this track. So about downforce, downforce is best assessed in uh, fast corners, which are very plentiful in this track, but especially they are very, let's say, uh, they make most of the first set. So I'm going to revert back to, let's say, the single lap times, then removing the labels. And then instead of looking at the lap time, so sorting the drivers and evaluating them on all the lap, I will evaluate them on the first sector alone, which is the one in which uh, most of the fast corners are uh, located, also the third one. So I'm now showing the time needed to complete the first sector, and then I'm going to sort them this time based on the time in that sector. So what we can notice is that the overall packing order doesn't change much, okay? So it means that the truck itself is very, let's say, related to downforce for, it, for the performance along the lap. So as uh, evaluating the performance on the first sector gives you a very similar, let's say, evidence of evaluating performance on all the lap, it means that uh, performance is very well correlated with the fast corners which you find in the first sector. But still, we can notice some differences, okay? For example, Verstappen is now second quickest in sector one on average. So this means that Verstappen did have some impressive cornering uh, capabilities which are shown in the first sector. And this is something which we also saw in the free practices. For example, in free practice one, even though science was uh, quickest, Verstappen was around 15 kilometers per hour quicker in a few of the fast corners, which is impressive. So even though Red Bull was overall inferior to Ferrari, there are still some aspects, for example, sector one, in which their performance was uh, uh, relatively similar. Even Perez is fifth quickest and not very far from, uh, let's say, the, the race winner in sector one. So Red Bull really shined in, uh, in this sector and it, it highlights one strength which Red Bull was able to retain, even though their general performance has degraded uh, through this season.